Hello and welcome. I am Morgan, founder and CEO of Pavia. We are Metaverse Specialists. In this update, my first video of many, I'm going to give you a rundown on Pavia, what we've achieved so far, what our current milestones are, and what the future may look like. In our last update, Paul showcased some of our achievements to date. What I'm going to do for you now is give you a very quick TLDR on what Pavia is, for those that may have been asleep during the last two years, or hibernating during the bear market. We started with land ownership, and we still have over 17,400 landowners of our 100,000 minted out lands. To me, that's a very exciting metric. Initial integrations were avatars. And these were an easy and obvious place for people to start. Our early partnership with Ready Player Me saw 33,000 pieces of wearable avatar merch claimed in the summer of 2022 during the Pavia Explorers event. Next, we produced a V1 builder tool. It was quite rudimentary and many community members joined us to test and provide feedback. That feedback was invaluable and ultimately led on to the builder tool or studio that we've gotten. Our first live event in a section about Plaza saw over 1,100 people running around, discovering secret rooms, collecting prize boxes and minting pavs and avatar merch. It was a good way for us to showcase the look and feel of the Pavia World Metaverse experience. Then we focused on an improved builder tool. And when I say improved, I mean much improved builder tool and shipped the bespoke tool, which we call the Pavia Studio, which leverages procedural generation and smart objects at scale. This tool will power much of what the Pavia world experience will look like. We then took the decision to start building and testing in public and launch the playground, which has seen numerous patches and improvements. The data from this is truly invaluable to us. All of your feedback is welcome and received. We fix bugs, we learn, we iterate, and we use that data to estimate what we're going to need to build and improve upon for the main Pavia World immersive experience. So thank you to all of those who visited and continue to visit to help us test and build in public. We've added the ability to import 3D models into the tool. You can check out our Cinti Studios affiliate link if you're looking to buy some assets to import. We believe this is important because not everybody wants to build everything, nor do people want to pay for people to build it. And it goes back to my very foundational ideas for this project. After running around Decentraland and buying Sandbox land, the tooling just wasn't there for the average person like you and I to build something meaningful and deploy it into a metaverse experience. Which is why, shortly after Avatars, we've come out with the Pavia Studio, which enables the everyday person to build something and deploy it, get feedback, tweak it, deploy it again. And then the real fun start later down the line when we start plugging things in such as tokenomics, token gating, NFT minting, all of the other fun stuff that monetizes the scenes that you guys will build and deploy into the emerging metaverse. Our work with Metagravity saw an initial 5,000 players in the playground. This work continues. I've had some very exciting meetings with Metagravity and their team. We've got more meetings coming up this month and we are hopeful that we can bake these solutions into the MVP this year instead of launching with a more traditional realms based system and then upgrading it to a more substantial solution down the line. So a few more things to check first, but I'm hopeful that we should be able to have at least 5,000 to 10,000 players in the MVP on day one, fingers crossed. We also dropped our Cardano mix. These come in crates of five parts, have a PAV driver, are interchangeable and tradable. Some have special abilities, such as flying, and some keep escaping the confines of the playground. Not sure exactly how, but they keep getting out into the mountains, into the trees, into the mountain-based forests, and sending us screenshots. So we'll have to tighten up the security to keep them within the realms of the current playground. On the subject of mechs, we've had some very cool meetups in the playground. No mech required, you can also join with a Ready Player in the Avatar. As we moved into 2024, we added the ability to switch between your Ready Player Me avatar and your mix inside the playground. A playground patch saw new textures, themes, and the addition of a sinister mech from a different blockchain. He's still there now if you wish to go and check him out. There'll be more on that later. The YouTuber Melos Crypto published a video on Pavia, which is on his channel, should you wish to check that out also. 
we dropped a tutorial video on how to construct a house using the Pavia Studio and added procedural roofs. Now, if you've ever tried to build using traditional tools, you will realize just how hard roofs are. Well, not any longer, not with us, not with the Pavia Studio. We added the publish option to export your builds into the live playground for others to experience. This is a big step forwards and offers the opportunity for all builders to see their work in the public domain for feedback and tweaking accordingly. We showcase some custom mech skins for projects who support our mech mints, such as the bright banana yellow example for the Zero X Apes project. We also partner with Polygonal Mind and Bipe. We have started the process of adding support for over 260,000 avatars inside Pavia. Many are live now. If you want to round around Pavia as a roll of toilet paper or as a virus, you now can. We have deployed a mech battle island on Nifty Island. We are the first non-ETH project to integrate onto that platform. There's lots more to come in that regard. And we've been exploring some AI related stuff. In terms of the token, we tried moving 50% of the total supply of Pavia tokens to Ethereum as ERC20 tokens. This was not well accepted. So these were burned, leaving us with now 1 billion on Cardano. The tokenomics are in our Discord channel. Wingrider's decks added incentives for those adding Pavia liquidity throughout their boostery. We announced a partnership with Fluid and locked the team's allocation of Pavia tokens to the tune of 60 million tokens. They'll be locked for one year and will invest monthly thereafter. Tap Tools evidenced Pavia as the second most token on Cardano accumulated by whales. Read into that as you wish. We went live with a coin store, Pavia versus USDT trading pair. We are in talks with other centralized exchanges. Unfortunately, they all require paying. And at this moment, we are prioritizing runway over exchange listings. But this work does continue and it does have our focus. We did have an X space arranged with Charles Hoskinson, but unfortunately, this was backed out of last minute following an issue elsewhere in the space. We have open cons. So hopefully there'll be something there in the future. Moving on to the here and now, we do need to expand we need more builders, more players, more liquidity. Up first, land merging as suggested by the community. We have committed to keeping the total lands at 100,000. What land merging means is you can send your adjoining plots of four or more. When we say adjoining, we mean side adjoining only, not corner to corner. In return, you will receive one large estate NFT and a deed for a new plot of land. What that means is that we will have the opportunity to utilize these newly formed lands via deeds in a cross-chain move. It means that your management of your portfolio properties will become smaller because each estate, for example, at the moment, three by three is nine, you'll be able to manage that as one NFT. Plus you'll have a deed for the new one. And what that does for us as a project is frees up seven new land plots elsewhere, but it still keeps the total at 100,000 pieces of land. They are just in various different shapes and sizes. But remember, all of the Cardano lands are nearest the center of the map. We also had lots of ideas thrown around in relation to the sea. Underwater realms, construction of bridges between current land masses, and potentially future islands assuming that we can still keep the max cap of land at 100,000 NFTs. As a project, we cannot simply make these changes. From day dot, it's all been about ownership. We sold all the land. That sits across 17,500 wallets. The community need to own these assets, come together and decide upon future updates and future snapshots. For example, looking at the central map, it is not outside the realms of possibility to build a bridge between two separate parts of land across the sea. What that would look like is the landowners on either side of that piece of sea would agree that a bridge needs to go there. And then the sea in the middle would need to be owned. Then we would run some checks on our side, take a snapshot, update the map. There is a bridge added to the map and in game between those two points of land. It is important to say the underwater biomes are also not a problem, nor custom 
water related assets for the builder tool or even pavs underwater pavs can't say any more on that but these cnfts will naturally come secondary to land nfts if you want to really build then you need land if you want to do some other cool stuff then the c is there as an option equally archipelagos have been mentioned roads to archipelagos all of this cool stuff but the first stage is that you own it just as you own the land then it's a community-based decision on what happens perhaps we can do some votes on it but it definitely isn't for us to say right we're going to put some ink between these two plots of land there'll be a nominal cost for minting the sea that will go live at the same time that we do the merging of plots into larger estates additionally a partner of ours is working on cross-chain nft bridges they have said q2 so hopefully that comes in on time if not there are other options for us to explore but it's important for us that we start bridging out and becoming a multi-chain chain agnostic nft project there is no difference to us whether people hold their nfts in a cardano wallet or metamask for example we can still pull the data in and use it accordingly both on the 2d map and in the experience later on down the line we need to look at writing to the chain or a layer two that's something we'll announce in due course but at the moment it doesn't matter where these placeholder assets sit they can sit on cardano they can sit on ethereum they can sit on a layer two they can sit wherever we can still pull that data in and use it and that is the beauty of what we're building that these assets can flow freely wherever the liquidity is Whatever somebody's preference is on wallets or chains, we want them to sit everywhere. As per the example in the playground, we have the range of mechs ready to be dropped on another chain. He's quite sinister looking, as we've already said. And we can't have mech battles in Nifty Island or in Pavia without two different factions. So watch this space in relation to Mech Pavs, the expansion. As a project, we are looking at a number of ways to extend our runway. I must admit, it isn't easy building on Cardano as a project. After two years, there's still no meaningful support on centralized exchanges, especially tier one and tier two. And after two years of anti-VC sentiment, the people that we've spoke to define invested in Cardano only based project as risk on risk. And why would we invest in a chain when the founding entities don't invest in their own projects? Please don't shoot the messenger. This is just me being honest but it is one of the fundamental driving factors in our assets living on multiple chains. Full disclosure, especially when I spoke at NFT London in 2022, I was told, why Cardano bridge across, move fully? At the moment, we are hopeful that we can bridge our assets, stay true to our Cardano holders, offer these assets cross-chain, and hopefully that will be attractive to not only more players that want to come involved, but also potentially some investments, providing they meet our criteria and they're on the same page as us moving forwards because we were absolutely not going to sell our soul to some VC doesn't have the right vision. Some of our team are currently working on Pimp the Playground for optimization and asset improvement. Additionally, we are looking at a procedural version of the Playground for testing the really heavy-duty stuff. Now, some parts of that second playground may not be pretty, but it's an essential next step towards the MVP. There's some really hardcore tech that's fundamental to Pavia World that we need to test. I believe we should keep the current playground live because it's a very good example of the finished look and feel, high quality. We can bring your assets in. We can do brand experiences. We can do takeovers. We can do collaborations. There will be a second playground that you can move across into that will be more rugged and raw and will allow you to see the technological advances that we are inputting in real time as we march towards MVP for Pavia World. So you can expect that over the coming months. We've all endured a brutal bear market. Metaverse projects have somewhat gone out of fashion. Many pivoted heavily towards gaming. Now, we have a subtle gaming element, mainly with mechs, but first and foremost, our focus is on tooling user-generated content and scaling solution. Gaming is secondary. We believe that's important because there are some massive entities coming into the MMO world. Everything we ship and every partnership will be used in some way to call people into the Pavia world experience. 
Similarly, we have been approached by others to offer Metaverse as a service, but we'll only do it if it adds to our runway and has overall synergy with our plans to move forwards. We have a few more meetings this month in relation to scaling, and we should finally receive word on our non-insignificant research and development claim. I'm hopeful then we can publish the roadmap as we march towards MVP and beyond. The biggest way you can help us is to build, publish to the playground and ask others to help. Ask them to come and build, test your scenes. Whether or not they hold land, they don't need to. Just come and build, come and explore, come and see what we've built and help us spread the word. The other ways to help are to merge your land so we can free up some resources to leverage from cross-chain. I am sure you will love the new map edition, which adds, not detracts from the current map. You can mint the C. It will help in terms of total NFTs minted, but above all else, getting those bridged as well as lands bridged cross-chain with a big marketing push and the Pavi Explorers reloaded should bring the eyes and excitement needed. I mean it when I say it. We are right at the forefront of metaverse development. We are far more advanced than projects that had a hundred times more funding than we started with. With your help in 2024, we will step out of the shadows. To coin a phrase, we are just getting started. Thank you for listening.